the latest figure from the Cameroonian government was 458 elephants killed uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, and if that rate keeps up, uh, Cameroon isn't going to have elephants for that much longer. Five fellows with a sporting rifle can't do that. It needs a big gang with very powerful weapons. We have heard instances where they use AK-47s, you know, they spray the animals with bullets. They use different acids, sometimes they use machetes to hack off the ivory from the animals. The animals are sometimes still alive. Every day, the poachers are developing new, new tactics. Two days ago, we lost two of our rangers to some of the poachers. One of the officers killed over the weekend was the first female officer that KWS has lost. We had 23 tons of ivory seized in 2011. That is an astonishing amount. Yeah, Interpol started working with I4 back in 2005. Over the years, that relationship has also expanded into much more of a supporting and um, symbiotic relationship. I4 has been a strong supporter of this project from the beginning. The operation is termed Operation Worthy, and there are 14 countries participating in this multi-country law enforcement operation. We're trying to relieve some of this pressure by suppressing the financial incentive of the ivory trade shut down some of the market, as many markets as we can. So basically, as you said, we've got a three-pronged approach. We have got the intelligence information in Livingstone, and in Mumbwa, and in Mokushi, and Lusaka as well. Put your plans in place for Lusaka and the, re the local region. This compound is a very dangerous compound. That's where you have most of the dangerous criminals living. The area that they're dealing with is a low socioeconomic, so high unemployment area, which increases the risk for law enforcement officers. We started trading this guy some two weeks ago. We had put one of our officers on the ground to continue trailing him. He's not working alone, he has got the other people that he's working with. going to actually start interviewing him and find out where this ivory is coming from and at the same time to know whom he deals with. So according to him, he was telling me that he sells 200 pin, which is something like $20 per kg. Yeah, that's the street value. This is a very serious offense. Once convicted, he's going to go in for a minimum of about seven years and a maximum of about 15 years. So yes, it's a small piece, but it is a vital piece. It's a start in the right direction. Yesterday, I met the informer, so the informer told us that no, there is someone who is having some pieces of ivory. From here, we shall go and get the other officer there and our informer, and we go and pounce there. Uh, police, Zao. He says he doesn't know anything. He said that, you know, the person has left and has gone somewhere. We suspect that maybe the other guy, the, the main perpetrator, maybe uh, he realized that people are trying to follow him, I don't know, because that other guy is not there, and the ivory which we suspect is not there, it has gone. It's really a challenge to us in terms of, you know, resources, equipment, and so on. The Zambian Wildlife Authority is, is very much impacted by capacity and resources to get their job done. If you had the only vehicle, would have then, then, then bounced and then apprehended the guy. The simple fact is, most African agencies don't have the financial resources to do it. They don't have the resources to train their people. They don't have the resources to put them out in the field. Your ability to plan and react is directly proportional to the resources you have at your disposal. These folks are under-resourced, and that's why I4 is putting a lot of effort into building capacity for wildlife law enforcement. Do you think uh, any African agency is going to get double the budget over the next two years if the elephant uh, trafficking problem doubles in size as it has over the last two years? No. 
This is a global trade, a global demand for ivory with a lot of international actors. Some of them are nasty, nasty people. Here alone in Kenya, they've lost, I think it is seven uh, rangers in gunfights since Christmas Day. Every member of this global community has to rethink twice that every time you buy a wildlife product which has been illegally shipped, you are endangering the people who protect. We want these people who, who take wildlife to go behind bars. We want them to be punished. They're robbing from a, a collective global wealth our natural history and heritage, uh, and they need to be punished. I4 has been a, in a leadership role in, in breaking down many of the barriers that exist between intergovernmental and non-governmental. We have to help the African agencies breach some sort of parity um, with the criminal syndicates. They're making big profits, and we're trying to meet this challenge with very modest resources. It is a global issue. It needs a global response. The challenge is very daunting, and so there is need to put every resource that's available into the bush. Direct support for equipment to agencies that have a mandate for protecting animals. We need some formal training for most of our officers here. Really, if you can find some people can help us in terms of resources, equipment, I think we can be able to combat the, the illegal trade of ivory.